Good evening, Evansville Day School. Welcome to the 2021 State of the School Address. I wish that we were together here at the campus, uh, but unfortunately for this year, we're going to use the modern technology that we've all become so accustomed with. Uh, and for our first time ever, we're going to do the State of the School Address, as you well know, watching right now, as a YouTube live video. And this video will be available after the broadcast as well. Normally, if we were here on campus, you would be able to ask questions, and we want to try to give you that same experience as uh, we go through the evening. And so if you have any questions, you can type them in the live chat. We'll try to take a little time at the end to answer those questions. And if we can't answer your question, we'll follow up individually on any answer that we can't get to live. It's been uh, an incredible year. Uh, you hear all of the words all the time, unprecedented, uh, nothing that anybody ever could have prepared for. Uh, and, and certainly that's where we're at standing here today. Hopefully tonight we'll be able to talk a little bit about where we've come from uh, and look ahead to where we're going. I think a lot of you know that I came into education as an English teacher. I taught high school English. Uh, in Houston, Texas, just right out of my undergraduate uh, while I was getting my master's degree. Uh, and I've continued to move on and get into administration and do those types of things. But my heart has always been as an English teacher. Uh, and one of my favorite authors is Ernest Hemingway. And in my studies, and then when I got the opportunity to teach AP Lit courses, uh, I always wanted to teach the Sun Also Rises. And so I would teach The Sun Also Rises, which is one of my favorite novels by Hemingway. And in that novel, the protagonist is the narrator. His name is Jake Barnes. Uh, and at one point in the novel, Barnes says this, maybe if you found out how to live in it, you learned from that what it was all about. I've been thinking a lot about that quote uh, as we have reached our 75th year of our school's history. We haven't had the opportunity to celebrate that maybe the way we would have liked to, but it's such an incredible accomplishment. And what I think about when I think about those 75 years is that idea from Hemingway about learning from living is exactly what Evansville Day School has always been about. We've been about working with our students to gain an understanding through living. We'll learn to use experience to grow, not just in knowledge, but also in the qualities that make us an individual, the qualities that make us human, and the qualities that make us empathetic citizens of the world. It's kind of interesting to me that that was actually exactly what they were thinking about when Evansville Day School was formed 75 years ago. The beginnings of the school started with seven students uh, in the back of a church down on Southeast First Street downtown. We were just a preschool then. And when they were promoting that preschool, there was an article done by the local paper at the time. And in that article, they promoted the fact that this preschool was gonna be about what they called all-round development. That's so much exactly who we are now. Even with just seven students in a preschool, even 75 years ago, the mission of Evansville Day School was to educate the whole child. And we continue to do that even to this day. Even as prescient as they were 75 years ago, I don't think they could have imagined. They couldn't possibly have dreamed of what we are now. I don't think they could have dreamed of a beautiful campus out on Green River Road, which at the time was a cow pasture. I don't think they could have dreamed of the 40 plus flags that hang in trailer atrium representing our multiculturalism and our diversity. I don't think they could have dreamed of 50 plus graduating classes that have brought these whole people into the world and let them go off into it, becoming leaders here in the Evansville community, but also becoming leaders nationally and leaders globally in every industry you could possibly imagine. One of the other interesting things about that school 75 years ago is that one of their traditions was that the nurse greeted each student at the door each morning to kind of give them a little checkup. Uh, and after this past year, that image is just very eerily familiar to me. 
Uh, we all know, we've been seeing all the retrospectives over the last couple of weeks that we are just a little over a year removed from here in Evansville reacting to the pandemic and having our school building closed down. We had to adapt very quickly. We had to rethink and reimagine our curriculum. We had to rethink and reimagine our traditions. Uh, and we had to very quickly figure out a way to take us or to continue to have us educate that whole child, but to now do it through a screen and from a distance. I'm so impressed by everything that we did accomplish uh, and all of the ways that we were able to make that work in such a short amount of time. Uh, but even with all of that success, you know, and all of the things that we accomplished, that wasn't what struck me the most. What struck me the most over the course of this last year has been the courage of the individuals in our community. Uh, because it's easy to say that we're resilient, but the basis of resilience is courage. Uh, I, I've seen the courage of our parents. Uh, their lives were disrupted, turned upside down, jobs lost or furloughed, uh, and yet they still were able to find ways to partner with us to become teacher's assistants uh, instantaneously to help keep their children on task as we did remote learning. I'm so incredibly impressed with the courage of our students. It's not easy to be a student, whether you're a three-year-old or you're an 18-year-old. Your entire educational process through high school is all about change. It's all about growing and changing emotionally, physically, intellectually. That's hard enough to do in normal circumstances. But over the course of the pandemic, our students had to rise even above that. They had to rise above anything I was challenged with as a student, and maybe anything most of the adults in our community were challenged as a student, and they have risen to that. They've shown so much courage and so much bravery. I've been incredibly impressed with the courage of our teachers. I, I was not somebody who really ever used the term essential worker before, but I know now, if I didn't know then, that teachers are 100% essential workers. And it's because they are committed to young people, they're committed to our future, but now as you really look at it, and we've been able to observe it over the last year, they are contributing to our business community and keeping that running. They're contributing to our future in every way, shape, and form. And so to our teachers, I'm so grateful to all of them. Uh, they were demonstrated so much courage and so much bravery in what they've accomplished uh, in being able to keep our school going and to work for our children. Because at the end of the day, educating the whole person is important because those teachers, in partnership with their parents, are creating the creators that are gonna go out into the world. In many ways, though, the real challenge of the pandemic was, was not just um, the illness, which of course, all of the tragedies that have kind of come with that, but there was a combination of factors. Um, we became increasingly, as a society, comfortable with discord. That was mixed up in politics and the pandemic itself. Outrage has become more and more the norm. Uh, unfortunately, we're beginning as a society to see compromise and empathy, dialogue, listening, understanding and compassion as a sign of weakness when that is absolutely our greatest strength. I think here at Evansville Day School, we know that. And we are producing children that are going to go out into the world and represent those values. And one of the values that's so key to our portrait of a graduate is balance. And balance for us is about being well-rounded, the all-round student. But I think, as I reflect on it now, I recognize that balance is, is really broader than that. It's bigger than that. Balance really means having the ability to be a confident person, to be a leader, to have a voice of your own, to, be, to have a belief system that you value, but at the same time, being able to be compassionate, be respectful and civil, to understand other people's point of view and values. That's balance. Uh, and that is what Evansville Day School has always uh, strove towards. This is, in many, many ways, a moment of transition for our school. 75 years is a marking point. And of course, with everything that's come up this year, we're now in a moment of reemergence. It's a time to come forward from this pandemic, to come forward from the changes we had to make, and look ahead to our future. 
it's not necessarily the easiest moment in our school's history. To be completely transparent, things are challenging right now. We would like to have more enrollment than we do. Our enrollment went down a little bit with the pandemic. At this stage, standing here in March, it looks like we may not quite meet our annual fund goals. Last year, we were not able to give a raise to our faculty members. And this year, our budget may have a small deficit at the end of the year. Our board has been so fiscally responsible over the five years that I've been here and for many, many, oh, sorry, three years that I've been here and the many years before that. But even with that and all those things, we have challenges ahead. And what I'm happy about is that we are in a growth mindset to meet those challenges. We want to look and say, how do we come out of this stronger and better? It's easy to say we want to return back to what we were. Uh, and I'm looking ahead to say, how do we return back to what we were and something even greater? We're going to move out of crisis management mode into that mode of growth and emergence. We have that opportunity because so much of learning comes out of struggle, right and wrong, want and need, impossible and possible. What's great about day school is that for 75 years, we've always been oriented toward the possible. The next 75 years begins, you know, with what we are, the best independent school in the area. We need to lean into that and then continue to grow that vision. We need to have the opportunity for more students to experience an education here at day school. We need to grow our academic opportunities. We have to grow our academic rigor, including continuing to develop our experiential education, which is so much of a strength for our program. We want to continue to strengthen our team experiences, academic teams, band and theater, sports teams, artists, community service projects. These are the things that bring our students together in a collaborative way uh, and gives them an incredibly important lesson in life. They're also the things that give us pride in place. They help us think about being an eagle and wanting to be an eagle and understanding what being a day school eagle means in the broader community. We also want to be a safe and inclusive environment that can bridge the gap between differing points of view, break down the walls of prejudice, and open up lines of communication. Our students are going to be leaders of that going forward into the world. Those are the things that are going to be valued by colleges and universities. They're going to be valued by jobs in the future, and they're going to be valued by communities where our students are going to live. We've been doing all these things for a long time. And so in some ways, when I am talking about the state of the school, I'm talking about the state of what we have been. We have been so strong. And interestingly, 75 years ago, with the all-round development of a child, we knew what needed to be done for a student. Those people 75 years ago, our forefathers, our forebears, they were able to lead and vision things, but now we need to take that further with some calculated investment. We need to continue to dream of what might be and think a little bit about what the world is going to look like in our future, to begin to try to get out in front of that. What's the world of a JPK student going to look like when they graduate? Our portrait of a graduate does much of that. 21st century curriculum, 21st century education is not going to be about standardized curriculums. There's no state, there's no religious entity, there's no global consortium that's going to create the curriculum that is going to feed the young people as we go forth into the future. It's going to be about individualized education that allows students to discover who they are, discover how they relate to others, and discover how they can enter and serve the world. In our primary school, we're looking for a lot of different things. We've had to, because of the pandemic, integrate technology into our primary school a little bit more than we have in the past. That has actually been a wonderful thing. And so we, particularly in the third and fourth grade, they've learned more technology and have more experience in that. And we want to continue to develop that and integrate that into our play-based curriculum. Next year, we're gonna to begin to expand the academic success program. Uh, and, and so we're going to uh, the Center for Academic Success will begin to look at trying to find ways to uh, have extra learning 
uh, learning that will be available to students who want to be advanced or want to move forward a little bit. Uh, and so we're excited about that. We're going to continue to lean into our social emotional learning program. Resilience, uh, learning how to live in community, learning how to know oneself. We know that at that primary school level, that's the foundation of a personalized education. And the foundation of a personalized education is absolutely 100% the person. In middle school, our strengths have been experiential education. And this year, we've been able to add social emotional learning component in there as well. These will become our cornerstones. This is the time when young people learn discipline, they build confidence, they lean into design thinking. They are place their mind firmly in the entrepreneurial and the global. Uh, we've done a number of things at that level with a new math curriculum. Again, with technology having moved a little bit into the primary school, we can get greater skills in technology and use those tools better as we're developing and learning. In the upper school, we want to continue to position ourselves as the school that understands the future of education. In the upper school in just the past year, we've put in an integrated mathematics program. We've put in flexible scheduling for the humanities and AP classes. We've put in nine week seminar courses so that students can uh, engage with their teachers in a different way and they can learn for the sake of learning. We've integrated into the Canvas Learning Management System, which is the gold standard of learning management systems and is the one that all colleges and universities use as a version of our, or a element of our college preparatory program. We've put dual credit courses in, in Spanish, English, chemistry, and we've developed our leadership program, our SLC, our Student Leadership Council, which gives our students real ownership of their upper school and hopefully at the school as a whole. Our team experiences continue to be an expansion of our classroom. They are the classrooms of resilience. They're the classrooms of balance. They're the classrooms of building up those around you. With our focus on experiential education and student leadership, team experiences help us create a curriculum of collaboration. And collaboration is absolutely going to be the currency of the future. Day school has been the school of the future for 75 years. It might seem that we were this small school out here on Green River Road, but as I read and I look at all the things and the trends in education, day school has been doing a lot of those for a number of years. And so now the question begs, how do we become the leader for the next 75 years? The world's gonna start to catch up with us. We need to be prepared to be the school that leads into the future. The biggest way we can do that is to steward our resources. We need to have compensation for our very gifted faculty. We need to grow our enrollment and we need to enhance and upgrade our facilities so that our students and our faculty have the best possible places to work and grow. That can start right now. Later this evening, you're gonna get an email from the chair of our board of trustees, uh, Robert Foster. That letter is going to begin our continuous enrollment process. And so one of the ways that you can be a part of what we're doing and how we're growing is that you can continue to be a family here in our school. And we're excited to have you, and we're looking forward to uh, continuing moving forward with you and giving you the best education possible. You can make a donation to our annual fund. Our fiscal year is June 30, ends on June 30. Uh, and we have some work to do on the annual fund, and we would love it if you wanted to make a contribution in that way. Annual fund dollars go towards the unrestricted budget of the school. We can use that money for a lot of different things. And what we like to use it for, what I'd like to use it for, is investing in our faculty and our programs. You can be an ambassador. You can be out there talking to one, two, three, four families that you know, saying how much you enjoy being here at Evansville Day School, what it's giving to your children, and encouraging them to give us a call to fill out an inquiry form to come and visit. They're gonna tell you it's too expensive or it's too small or they're happy where they are. And I encourage you to keep pushing them. If they come and have a conversation here with us, I'm fairly confident that we can make them see how we can be a great benefit to their child as well. We know all of the benefits. This is an investment. Small classes, great friendships, teachers who care and listen, 
community that wants to the best for one another, not to see each other fail. Challenging academics, but with the support to maximize success and an orientation toward excellence in all that we do. It's right there on our mission statement. I, I no longer want to be the city's best kept secret or too expensive or too small. Our size is our strength. We are able to meet students where they are. We're able to ensure that students are seen and known. We're nimble enough to truly partner with you and your child for their academic and social and emotional success. Students at day school can forge their own path. They have the opportunity for genuine discovery. Together, as a community, we learn how to live. And in the learning, we also learn what it's really all about. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for listening in, or if you're watching later on, I appreciate it so much. We do have the opportunity to ask some questions now, so if there are for some questions in the chat, I'm going to try to be able to take them with, again, our technology here uh, at the school. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so right now we have no questions. So uh, since we don't have any questions tonight, I want to offer you this. Um, one of the reasons that you are here at Evansville Day School is because you should feel that you have access to us. Uh, it should be very open to you, and I'm glad you have no questions. I'm hoping that means that everybody is happy and satisfied. But I know that there are times when you might have a question, you might want to talk about something, and one of the things that you know, being a small school is about is you having that ability as parents to have access to us. And so I encourage you uh, that if you do have some questions after this, if you're thinking about you know, the school, if you have any questions about your child, if you have any questions about how you can help uh, in growing what we do, please give us a call. Uh, you can email me. You can email anybody on my administrative team. You can obviously email any of your teachers. Uh, you can reach out to us. If you call the school, they'd be happy to put you through to me, uh, and I would love to talk to you and see you. I don't get to see you as much around the atrium right now, but we're just about at that point. I'm, I'm so excited that we're coming out of this pandemic. Uh, we're excited here at school about vaccines. We're excited at school about nice warm weather where we can get outside. Uh, and I'm looking forward over the next few months to be able to see so many more of you again uh, here on campus, around the community uh, as a whole, as we look forward into the next 75 years of our school's history. So again, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Uh, and I appreciate it. And uh, reach out if you have any questions. And look ahead for that email tonight about continuous enrollment. Thank you.